Hello everyone. We are going to be looking at an example of rotational kinetic energy and rolling without slipping. We'll do three example problems, the first one being a conceptual problem and the next two being quantitative. So first the conceptual problem, part one. We have a box that goes down a ramp without friction. We have a solid cylinder with the same mass that rolls down uh, a ramp without slipping and that ramp has the same height and we want to know how their speeds compare at the bottom of the ramp. Again, a conceptual question, not a quantitative one. Since we only know the heights that the objects are starting at and we don't know the angle of incline or the length of the ramp, we're gonna to have to use energy conservation to analyze this. Anytime we're using energy conservation, we're gonna bring out the LOL diagrams. So let's first look at the box going down the incline. Uh, I'll remind you how these LOL diagrams work. The two L's are our initial and final snapshots in this scenario. Energy can be stored as K, kinetic energy, UG, gravitational potential energy, or US, spring potential energy. The I's here stand for the initial snapshot, and the F's over here stand for the final snapshot. In the very end, we can also have an increase in the thermal energy of the ground if there is friction present. So we can also have a possibility for there to be an increase in the thermal energy. The middle O here is where we start and it's where we identify the system that we are analyzing and whether or not there's any energy transfer into or out of the system. So with that, let's get started with identifying our system. The system is going to consist of the box and the earth and it could consist of the ramp, that's why I use parentheses, but since there's no friction, it's not necessary to include the ramp. Now let's go through one at a time and look at where energy may be stored. Initially, the speed is zero, so there's no kinetic energy to begin with. We are at above, we are at a height h above our reference, so we will have some bars of energy as gravitational potential energy in the initial snapshot. Uh, there's no spring in the initial. So that does it for the initial snapshot. Final snapshot, it is moving. There is some kinetic energy, so I'll put a few blocks there. Uh, we are at the reference height, so there's no gravitational potential energy, no spring present, so we're not gonna have any spring potential energy. And it's a frictionless surface, so there's no thermal energy. And I'm gonna back up. I should have four blocks in both cases. And now that I've gone through all of the energies, I see that I should have made the final kinetic energy four blocks high, not just two. And that's, uh, that's how the energy transfers for this system. Let's next look at the cylinder that is rolling without slipping. So now I've included one more place where energy can be stored. I've included the translational kinetic energy that we've already had. That's our left, right, up, down kinetic energy. But this is gonna be rolling. So we could also have energy stored as rotational kinetic energy. So there's now four terms in this L and there's five terms over here. Identifying my system, the system's going to be the cylinder, the earth, and the ramp. The ramp is important here because we're rolling without slipping. In order for that to happen, there must be some friction present that is torquing the cylinder so that it rolls. However, this friction does not slide at all, so there's going to be no increase in thermal energy. Um, all of that friction, it, all the friction is doing is transferring energy into the rotation of the cylinder. So let's go through this. Initially, there's no kinetic energy, translational or rotational. It is at a height h above the ramp, so there's gravitational potential energy. And in fact, we should use the same four blocks because both of these objects have the same mass and they're at the same height. And then there is no spring. In the final scenario, this object is both moving translationally and rotationally, so we should distribute our four blocks across uh, those two places where energy can be stored, but the height is zero, there is no spring, and the friction that's present is just torquing the system, it's not heating up the system. There is no kinetic friction, only static friction is another way to say that. All right, and now, we look at these two LOL diagrams and we can answer our conceptual question. The block ends up with all four bars of translational kinetic energy. The cylinder only ends up with three out of the four blocks of translational kinetic energy. So the block is going to be moving faster than the cylinder that is rolling. Let's think about how we might write that on an AP test. So here's a verbal description. We always start with 
a law of physics that is always true. In this case, the law of physics that we used is the law of conservation of energy. And I wrote a lot here. Feel free to pause the video and write it down if you want. The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy in an isolated system remains constant, but it can transfer between different energy forms. Since both objects start at the same height and have the same mass, the gravitational potential energy of the object Earth system is the same for each. For the block, all of the stored gravitational potential energy transfers into the kinetic energy of the block at the bottom of the ramp. For the cylinder, the gravitational potential energy gets split between the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy of the cylinder. Since the block's translational kinetic energy is greater than the cylinder's, the block is going to be faster at the bottom of the ramp. This would be a great paragraph length response describing which one is faster at the bottom. I do wanna throw another note in here though, um, that the total kinetic energy is the same for both objects, but for the cylinder, that total gets split between two different types of kinetic energy. So again, if you wanna write this down, pause the video. If not, we will move on to the quantitative examples. Quantitative understandings. Here, um, actually I think we're gonna stop here. We'll do this in a separate video uh, to keep them separate.